Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks. We're first time boat builders and we went all in when we decided to build this 41 foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. With her simple lines and common materials, she was designed with the home builder in mind. And she's buildable for a person with average DIY skills. Once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. Well, we didn't get all our build stringers installed like I had hoped. However, they all are cut, fitted, and fared. Everything's ready to go. We're just waiting for warmer temperatures so we can do our epoxy glue up. Now here on the starboard side, the first layer of the C and D stringers are in. Obviously the D stringer here is still in clamps. Uh, but while we wait for warmer temperatures, we can now move on to the chime. And this is simply where the bottom of the boat meets the side of the boat. And this design is considered a hard chine in that there's an easily identifiable uh, point where the bottom meets the side. Very simple. Versus say like a round bottom boat where it may be harder to identify or there's other hulls that have multiple chines. This is a single hard chine. And this type of construction is typically found in smaller boats or larger work boats because it's simple to do. You've seen this all along that this is a very simple process. These are straightforward angles, lots of straight lines. Uh, the average handy person, woodworker, somebody with a moderate amount of tools or experience working and fixing things would be able to build a boat like this. And for larger work boats, you want to design that simple simple and rugged and that you can build quickly, get it out to sea and start making money. So it is this type of design that allows a person like myself who has no boat building experience to build a large vessel like this. A lot of people think a hard chine is ugly. You know, they have in their mind a boat maybe they like or want to build and they have the image of a grand sweeping classic yacht with those complex curves. And while I wouldn't say that's impossible for the first time boat builder to build, because you know you can do anything but it would be exceedingly difficult it might be so difficult and frustrating that it led the person to give up so having a design with a simple hard chine like george bueller designed it allows a person to take on a project and believe that they can have some success if you remember all those months ago when we were building our frames on the framing table we cut out the chine notch as george indicated in his book while it was still on the table and in the plans, they indicate that the chine is to be made up of three layers of three quarter inch material. And in the plans, it specifically states, it shows on the diagram that the third layer, the most outside layer, should be two inches wide. For some reason, because I have it in CAD, I was able to take lots of digital measurements. Well, for that particular part of the plans, I took a digital measurement of the first layer, the inside layer, and I believe that was for station 24, and that showed that the chine was three and a quarter inches tall, that first layer. So I built my jig off that measurement, which is opposite of what I should have done. Because, particularly as you get towards the front of the boat, where this angle starts getting steeper, if you make this three quarters of an inch, it's not tall enough because you can see as this comes out, as the bottom comes up, say the chine is lower here, the front of the chine, this third layer was sometimes only an inch big, inch wide. And that is simply not big enough for a boat, a vessel this size. If I would have just followed the instructions and made sure the outside layer was at least two inches, and just let the inside layer be what it is. As it gets steeper here, it becomes four inches, five inches, six inches. It is what it is. We just needed to make sure that we had that two inches on the outside. So uh, we had to go back and recut the chine so that it became big enough. And if you have to make a mistake, this is what I would rather do than, you know, it's easier to cut something out than add something on. I made up a little jig. I carefully put it together to give me an accurate measurement that we could place on the bottom frame. And then on the side, it would go up two inches and then let that first layer fall where it may. No big deal, made our marks, we put a batten on that, and then we went and adjusted that batten so that it was a nice fair curve going around. Maybe a little high, maybe a little low, but we want that perfectly smooth going around the boat. It would be very noticeable 
when the boat is complete if that shine was going up and down because again this is boat is not perfect you know frames are a little high or a little low we're gonna have to do quite a bit of fairing on the bottom to make that all line up for the planking but the chine while we're working here that's gonna be kind of our standard to make that nice curve around the boat so after we had made our marks and made that fair then we used our circular saw to cut to the correct depth and then we used a very small adjustable level so that we matched the angle of the frame to the angle of the chine notch. We want these two to be coplanar, close. You know, we're going to have to do a lot of fairing later on, but we want to make that as easy as possible. So we made these surfaces coplanar and then cut it with the reciprocating saw. Then just like with the build stringers, we came back with a batten and the sander and made this all nice and fair. We wanted full contact uh, with each of these bilge pieces along each frame. So, and actually it's been the easiest part of this whole boat project. I mean, I'm working at shoulder height. Uh, I've got plenty of room to get my tools in here. It was a piece of cake. The chine is an important structural component of this boat. It attaches the transom all the way up to the bow and it's attached to each frame with epoxy and screws and it holds, you know, this boat as one big piece. With everything fit and ready for install, you can see this is where we come up against that changing uh, width of the chime. As I've said before, I wanna to try to avoid having to steam bend anything in this boat. I just don't wanna go through the trouble. And I suppose you could try to muscle this piece of wood into position. However, at station two, that uh, first layer is nearly seven inches and you would have a heck of a time trying to bend a seven inch piece wide of white oak into position. So what we're gonna do is a very simple and old boat building technique and it's called spiling. Obviously, I've never done it before. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but the concept is very straightforward. And you simply need a batten. And this technique can be used for like what we're doing here for the chine. It's more frequently used for cutting in planks that go on uh, your boat. But as it stands, all you need is a piece of uh, a batten piece that is gonna be narrower than the piece that you have to install. You take that batten, you install it into the spot that you need it in a nice straight line. You then make a mark on the batten. It doesn't matter where, as long as it's consistent. And then start taking measurements. And you measure down from the chine, top of the chine to the mark, note the measurement. Take a measurement from the bottom of the chine to the mark, note the measurement, and then you do that at each station. Once that's complete, you can take it off and then transfer it to a piece of wood. Now the piece of wood needs to be big enough to accommodate the widest point of the board that's going to be installed. And we're lucky enough that we have this big wide piece of white oak well, with a live edge. This is actually kind of scrap, but we're gonna put it to good use. And with the batten installed, then we just take our measurements and transfer them to the piece of wood. We measure down the measurement indicated, make a mark, and then we'll come back in and we'll stall some finish nails and then bend the batten around. Once the batten is in position, then we, we're sure it's nice and fair, then we'll mark it with a pencil and then go ahead and cut it. Once it's cut, in theory, it should just slip right in and be perfect, right? What could go wrong?
Well, that fits up really nice, right on our line. We're long on the bottom, just what we want to be. So when we start fairing, we have material to work with and the angles look nice. Now, what we have to do is kick this out a little bit because we need to calculate what the angle is where the chine meets the stem. So we're gonna make up a template for that stuff. To find the angle of this first layer of the chine, we're just gonna take a similar thickness piece uh, lay it in the notch just how it wants to lay and then adjust the angle for the uh, slope around the hull here and then we're going to slide it forward just till it makes contact with the keel here actually the knee and then we're going to put a straight edge on it and we need to make sure our straight edge is thick enough to encompass the entire length of that angle mark it and then this is going to be important because I can already tell that this is going to be a compound miter, meaning it's got angle and bevel. So we'll have to work that out. And then we also have to take into consideration how long that piece becomes when we cut that steep angle because we need to make sure that our finished three layers of chine ends up roughly right along the bearding line here that we can fit so everything uh, rolls around nicely. So now we got to make a bunch of test cuts. Well, I'll spare you the back and forth that I did at the miter saw to fine tune this angle, but I think we got it now. And that is fitting really nice. And with that angle established, now we can see how steep that angle is, but more importantly, we can take a measurement. We know how long this is. And considering that we have two more layers to come, we now know how far back the first layer needs to be from this bearding line so that the following two layers will just bring us past the bearding line not too far forward and definitely not too far back because when our planking comes on after we fare this chine in nicely our planking will swing around and flow nicely right into this rabbit and that's exactly what we want Well, we use some blocking just to hold it on its marks at the other stations and then as it's coming into station two it is looking really really good maybe a little fine tuning up here but otherwise it is just how i wanted it very happy so now with the hardest piece uh, done now we can go into the shop and mill up some of our rough stock for the rest of the pieces that will make up the chine so we can get started on that
So far so good, we had to use our spiling technique for the aft portion of the chine near the transom, but that was no problem. A little fine tuning and she slipped right in. Now the process will basically repeat for the subsequent layers and on the other side of the boat. Yesterday we had a beautiful sunny day with nice warm temperatures, it was about 40 degrees and with that sun it got up to about 75 in here. And that allowed us to do the glue up on this first layer uh, or this first portion of the chine. The other layers that we put on now are just dry fit into position and we'll have to wait for warmer temperatures, like everything else, to continue with our epoxy glue up. And I can already hear people in the comments about how this doesn't look right, it doesn't look fair, but you have to remember the actual chine, the actual point where the bottom meets the side is right about here. The, all this portion below that line is going to be fared and beveled away to match the angle of this bottom frame. And that two inch reveal will then slide around the boat to these other wider stations and give us that nice fair curve around the boat. So you'll just have to be patient and when we get to the bottom planking of the boat you'll see that nice even fair line appear going around the boat. We hope everyone checks out the description in this video. There you'll find a link and a discount code you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown has been a huge supporter of ours and we are very grateful. So we hope that our viewers will help support companies that help support our project. We hope folks will go and check out our social media platforms. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like those pages so you can follow along as we work in real time. You can check out our website at www.cdreamerproject.com and you can learn about all the steps that we've taken to get to this point in the build. Our salute to service wall continues. We got a few more patches in this week. And like we've said before, if you're current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, the armed forces, or any other kind of public safety, and you want to have a patch from your agency represented on our salute to service wall, we would be honored to have it. Just send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. We'll get you our address and you can get that mailed out. And one final thing about the project. 
Hopefully below this video you're seeing a window with a link in it. That is to our new merchandise store. And this is kind of a soft opening that we're doing for the merchandise stuff. There's only a few items that are currently available for purchase, but as I learn the software and how to add designs, hopefully more things will become available. And now this is being run through a third party company called Teespring. And they are an official and licensed partner company of YouTube. And they're currently the only company that's being allowed to embed a merchandising store within each video. Now, being an official and licensed YouTube partner, we know that the pay portal will be secure, we know the shipping and returns will be handled professionally, and basically it's, uh, I feel comfortable that you'll be comfortable as well. We hope folks will go and check out our store, see something they like, and help fund our project. And George Bueller, in his book, he does, talked about how he planned to bring this ocean-capable boat within reach of the average middle-class family. And besides having a simple design and common materials, he talked about building paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, you buy a little bit here, and two weeks later you buy a little bit there. The YouTube thing that we've done here, which we never had any plans to do, is kind of compressed that timeline. And the nest egg that we started out with to get us started, we've kind of gone through that almost. And we need to find another way to help us fund the project so that we can keep the series going in a you know, relatively regular manner. And I thought the store would be the best way to do it. Now, there's other ways, you know, people do Patreon or whatever, and I, I just don't think it's for us. You know, never say never, but uh, I, I feel much more comfortable being able to provide something that you can put in your hands and something tangible, and that's what a merchandise store will do. Now, will you be gouged in the store? Yes, you will be gouged. However, for the clothing items, I chose their highest quality uh, items to put our logo and designs on so that at the very least, while you're being gouged, you'll get a nice quality product uh, in exchange. And to put things in perspective, if half of our current subscribers purchased one t-shirt, that would completely fund the rest of this project, including the transport costs to the marina. If just 25% of our current subscribers purchased one t-shirt, that would pay for over half of what we need for materials and equipment to continue on in the build. So this is a doable goal and we hope that you'll help us make that happen. Of course, we love hearing from you. We've connected with people from literally all over the world. It's been a wonderful experience. So please leave a comment below and let us know what you think. You can send us an email at contact at cgmerproject.com or you can send us a message through our website. And we rely on you folks to help spread the word about what we're doing here at the C Dreamer Project. So what it is is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.